Hi, assalamualaikum and a very good morning. So now we are in chapter 4, chemical bonding. And now we're going to look into the new subtopic, which is 4.5 metallic bonding. So in this video, we're going to learn, we're going to learn about the explanation for the formation of the metallic bond by using the electron C model. Next, we're going to relate the metallic bond to the following properties of the metal, which includes malleability, ductility, electrical conductivity, as well as the thermal conductivity. Next, we're going to explain the factors that affect the strength of the metallic bond. So, once we understand the strength of the metallic bond, we're going to relate that with the boiling point of the substances. So, we're going to look about the learning outcome of A and B in this video, which is in the subtopic of 4.5. So, without any further ado, let us start. So, electron C model. So, when we are talking about electron C model, we are talking about a metallic bond. So, a metallic a metallic bond can be defined as the electrostatic force that exists between a positively charged metal ions and the C of the delocalized electron. So the delocalized electron here means that it is a mobile electron that can move freely. And this is exemplified by using the electron C model as shown here. So as what you can see here, we have the positive ion representing the metal ion, and then we have a negatively charged representing a delocalized valence electron, which is free to move. And in the metallic bond, the metal atom can be imagined as an array of the positive ion. Dalam satu, susunan positive ion, and they are immersed in a sea of a delocalized valence electron. And this delocalized valence electron are not bound to the individual atom. Diorang tidak terikat kepada atom yang sama. And therefore, they can move freely and they can serve to bind to the large number of metal atoms together according to the needs. And because of these properties here, where the electron can move freely, it can bring about the specific properties of the metal, which includes malleability as well as the ductility. So the, mal the malleability is the ability of a metal to be hammered into different shapes and sizes. So when knocked, the metal will bend its shape and this will produce a variety of shapes or pattern that we wanted. And for the ductility, is the ability of a metal to be drawn into wire. So when, whenever there is any stress that is applied to the metal, only one layer of the atom slide over another without disturbing the metallic bonding that are present on the other part. And because of this, the metal can be pulled into wire and this uh, causes the metal to always be used in the wiring system. Next, because of the properties of the electron which is being delocalized in the electron C model, it will causes the electron to be moved towards the positive terminal when the electric potential is being applied. So when the electron moves from the negative terminal to the positive terminal, there is going to be a movement of electron. And this movement of electron is called as electricity because electron will give the name of electricity, which is the electric that passes through the wire and this causes the metal to have a electrical conductivity which is a good electrical conductor and because of the electron that is free to move it can also be heated so when the electron is being heated it will passes the kinetic energy where it will move more frequently and this will transfer the energy from one side to the another side due to the electron movement. And this causes it to be transmitted from one end to the another due to the delocalized mobile electron, where what is being transferred is the kinetic energy. And now we're going to look into the factors that are affecting the strength of the metallic bond. So generally, the strength of the metallic bond will be depending on the number of the valence electron. 
and this is due to the delocalized valence electron that is involved in the formation of the metallic bond. So the strength of the metallic bond can be related by looking at the number of valence electrons that exist in the atom with the radius. So when the number of valence electrons per atom increases, the strength of the metallic bond increases. Meanwhile, for the radius, it is inversely proportional to the strength. So a smaller atomic radius will causes the strength of the metallic bond to be higher. So if you were to look at here, this part here, the bonding will be weaker in the sodium, where the boiling point will be lower because it only has one valence electron. In comparison to magnesium, which a little bit higher because it has two valence electrons, and then the aluminium going to be the highest because it has three valence electrons with a higher boiling point. So, uh, this is the situation for group for period 3. However, in period 2, which is in group 1, group 2, and group 3, so period 2 and period 3, so period 2 is a smaller in size, so when it got a smaller in size, you can see that the boiling point going to get higher and higher, and this relate to the radius. So when the radius gets smaller, and the number of valence electron is higher, which is 3, so you can see that the strength of metallic bonding will get higher. As a result, the boiling point for the element in period 2 to be higher than the period 3. Okay, and this is how you relate the strength of the metallic bonding. And for the last example here, um, with reference to the structure for the lattice and bonding, discuss the electric conductivity of the magnesium. In order to answer this question, we need to draw the electron C model first. So for magnesium, it is arranged, we're going to have a magnesium ion and it is arranged in an array. And they're going to have electrons which is delocalized. And it, it is not necessarily bonded to the same atom, but the electrons are free to move. So when we draw the electron C model, we need to ensure that we label the ion. So we have the magnesium ion as well as the delocalized valence electron. So from here, you can see that the positive charge of magnesium is surrounded by the sea of electron where the electron itself is delocalized or free to move. So when an electrical potential is applied to the metal, the mobile electron will move towards the positive terminal and thus conduct the electricity. And you can say that the electron can move freely and said to be conducting the electricity. And thus, the magnesium is an electrical conductor. Alright, and this is how you discuss the electrical conductivity by using the electron C model. So I think that's all for today's video. See you again some other time. Bye!